Pichu and we're on. We're just going to wait for everyone to get live and then I will introduce our lovely guest and then we'll get going. Um, Okie dokie. I hope everybody is doing well today. Hello, everyone. We're just going to wait for another 20 seconds and then we'll get started. I'm very excited. Today is going to be a good one. We have um, some wine, some uh, a glass and a half. <laughs> I don't do uh, half glasses. Okay, hello everyone. It is lovely to see everyone here. Today we have a very special guest. Um, she is an amazing beauty photographer and I've been adoring her work for a while. So I'm very excited for her to be here. Please everyone welcome Sarah. Hello. Hi Hello. Sarah. <laughs> Hello. How are you doing today? I'm good, I'm good. Quarantine life, you know, <laughs> plodding on. Yes, I know. Yes, it's just like every single day is exactly the same. So first, guys, let us know where you're coming from. I see some um, some places already. We see India. Um, someone says they have to sleep. I'm sorry if you have to sleep. Go back to sleep. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, okay. So I just want to quickly introduce Sarah here. Sarah is an amazing uh, beauty photographer. She is based in London currently. And um, she is absolutely incredible. I love her work. I think it's one of my favorite beauty work. So today we are going to be talking about beauty, about um, you know um, the business side of beauty photography. How does one make money with beauty? Um, you know, is it hard to get through? Maybe a tiny bit of like technical side. What kind of light to use and so on, if you don't mind. And then maybe some about retouching because you do retouch your own work, and I think it's pretty amazing. So. Oh, we have so many places. We have, look at that. We have Germany, Turkey. Okay, so we have Paris, LA, India, Turkey, Germany, Greece, Ghana, um, Virginia, Miami, Poland, Utah. Oh my God. Indonesia, <laughs> Netherlands, New York, Scotland, London, India, LA. Wow. Bali. Oh, <laughs> this, is, this is very international. That's amazing. I'm loving this already. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. Wow, that's great. Well, okay, so tell us first, just give us an introduction. Um, when did you start photography? When did you get into it? When did you decide that beauty is what you want to do? Just just give us a little bit of an introduction about you and your work, basically. Um, so I started, I, I kind of, I feel like I started late because I feel like a lot of people do it at school and mm -hmm. I didn't do it at school. I did art it was my quite academic school I went to so I did art IT which is kind of photography I guess mm -hmm. um and then I went on to do it at uni um mm -hmm. I did photography at uni um but I just I, it wasn't my thing and I I just I wish I just went straight into ass assisting yes yeah yeah so did you did you ever um so did you ever oh yeah you said um you assisted um Rankin right is that is that right yeah yeah I assisted Rankin for um was it like six, seven months? Okay. Yeah, that was quite good. Well, I learned like so much more there than I did at uni. And <laughs> did you do that? Say. Did you do that before or after uni or during uni? How how did it work time time wise? Um, so I finished uni and this was in Manchester, and then I kind of had a year in Manchester to kind of just find my feet as a freelancer. Um, and then I just was like, I'm moving to London. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, mm -hmm. And then I just, um, actually, I met Rankin at Fashion Week um, mm -hmm. and I went up to him, which was really scary because it's Rankin. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I just said, can I work for you? Um, and he was just like, yeah, here's my email. I was like, oh. wow. <laughs> yeah, so I was lucky. And at the time, did you have a portfolio already or was it just like random introduction uh, yeah. or, or how did it work? Um, I had a bit of a portfolio because of like what I'd made in Manchester like after uni and stuff but when I moved to London like I found it so hard like no one would work with me um it was <laughs> I feel like no no one like model agencies no one would talk to me mm -hmm. like no one would give me any yeah. models yeah but yeah I, I I feel you when I went to London I had the same thing I had so much trouble getting like models from model agencies because I feel like it is kind of like a tight business and everybody knows each other. So you really have to prove yourself to the agencies and you really have to get them to trust you first before 
Mm -hmm. um, before they do it. Actually, while we're chatting, I'm just going to share your um, Instagram so people can see your beautiful work. Um, mm -hmm. So we're just going to <laughs> share that. So yeah, so I think, you know, one thing that stood out to me um, okay, actually, before I get into that, um, so how long, how long did it take you from like starting photography? Like what, what kind of photography did you start with at the very beginning? Was it fashion? Was it like portraits uh, or, or? Yeah, so I went into, I went into fashion. Um, mm -hmm. Well, fashion and portraiture, beauty, like whatever I could take pictures of really. Um, mm -hmm. But fashion like was originally my main interest. And mm -hmm. then I just got like, I just love photograph makeup. And I just, faces, this is something about faces. Mm -hmm. And like how beauty sheets are just, they're just really chill to me. And I just was like mm -hmm. gravitated towards that 100%. Yeah. It's so funny because when I look at your portfolio, there's so many models that I know, um, you know, like, and, and maybe a few years back I wouldn't have. But now, obviously, because I've worked in London and before, because I worked in a few other places, it's kind of cool to see them all over your um, timeline. But I think every time I am in London, I always look at your portfolio and I'm like, who, who can I, who can I ask to work with me? Who <laughs> can I ask work with? It's actually so funny. You, you also worked with my friend. Um, she's a plus size model. You worked with her on the Cosmo shoot once. Um, her handle is Ty Style Me Curvy. She, oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I, yeah. So, she, she watched her live and she's like, no way I met Sarah in real life in, in London. We were shooting Cosmo <laughs> together. And I'm like, oh, no way. Yeah, she's so, so lovely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so, um, when you when you started doing beauty um how long did it take you to kind of figure out you know what kind of lighting you like what kind of retouching you like was it like a long process did it take you long to figure it out or was it something that you just like came up with instantly or you were like this this is it this is what i want um yeah i feel like i was taught at uni that it it's quite an overcomplicated thing the whole light because mm -hmm. i do like a lot of lighting in the studio and i feel like a lot of like resources tell you that it's so complicated you need all these lights and that that kind of stalled me for a bit I think because I was thinking I'm, oh I'm doing it wrong because my lighting mm. setup is so simple it's just one mm. light um so I was thinking I'm doing this wrong but I like what I'm doing so mm -hmm. <laughs> um yeah so yeah I, th I feel like I just kind of it took me a while to find my feet with what I kind of liked mm -hmm. with, with my lighting yeah yeah I think for sure. I think, you know, um, when you started, did you use mostly natural light then? Um, not really, actually. I've always been really into my lights. I spent my whole student okay. loan on some pro photo B1s. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay. So uh, mm -hmm. now do you still, do you still use pro photo nowadays or what do you use? Yeah, I've got this, the same student loan lights. <laughs> okay. Um, that I use great. my B1s still. It's kind that's of strange that I got B1s because it's they're mm. kind of location lights if you think about it um because they're mm. battery um but it's been so useful having them just for when i'm like traveling to different shoots and you don't have to worry about yeah, yeah. but on, on set i do hire different lights so yeah okay that's that interesting them. yeah it's pretty good because i i noticed that a lot of professionals that i speak to um they usually don't really change their gear that much and i find usually the better the work the less they the gear you know changes and it's pretty interesting because you know you have a lot of people that are so dependent on new gear and they're like oh i need this camera and this lens to be great but then i look at people like you and i'm like no it's bullshit you don't you just have to know your equipment very well yeah. you have to you have to know its full potential and then you know because of that you'll be able yeah, to, to do great work because you don't even need to, you don't really need like the best lights either you just need to like know what you're doing with them if that makes sense yes, ex exactly no absolutely i think so too and and you know sometimes so we had this conversation before with somebody here where we were talking about how you know sometimes you go into like photography shows and stuff like that and you see or, you know, or like you have um, even like behind the scenes shoots and stuff and you see people using like seven different strobes on all different <laughs> angles. And you're like, you're like, like why am I doing much. that? <laughs> no, but it's just like, it's crazy because it's like they use all those lights, but it's just the photos don't even look nice because it's just yeah. too much. It's just like, I feel like a lot of people just kind of hide behind their equipment and they're like, okay, I have all this best gear. I'm going to be the best photographer ever. And it's just... Saying that, saying that, I do know that um, some really big photographers, they put out loads of different lights, looking at making it look really, really like technical, just 
just so it looks good to the client. I know that's like that's a thing. <laughs> and so they, they have like they, light. so they have like switched off seven lights, but they have all of them on set just so it looks professional. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. A thing. So weird. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess it make it makes sense because I know out of my own experience back in the day when I would like shoot with clients, it's like if you show up with like a tiny little you know DSLR with one yeah. lens, they're like. Yeah. Where is all your gear? And I'm like, this is all my gear. This is all I need. I don't need anything else. But I expect you to have this like big backpack full of stuff and, and you know, and just carry all your equipment and have seven lights with you. And you're like, oh my God. Yeah, I feel you. Okay, let's just have a look. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, someone just asked, can you tell me which software am I sharing my screen on with life? I'm using StreamYard. That's what I'm using. Okay, um, we have so many people here from so like all over the world. It's amazing. Um, that's very great. That's really okay, amazing. I have a question. So I have a question for you about your um, about your Instagram. So those photos here that you see on the screen, right? The three photos that you took in the water. I always really, mm -hmm. really admired them, and I think they were so nice. Did you use artificial light or was it just natural light? That was it. Was natural light and just a reflector. That's amazing. It looks so good. And, and I love the fact that you were able to use what's available to you and make it still look like it's a like it's a beauty, um, you know, setup. I yeah. think it's incredible. I um, mean, like natural light is like the, the, per the most perfect light. It just kind of it does mm -hmm. scare me that because I just love consistency and, and the whole natural light thing. You kind of under time. Yes. Aren't you? You're under a time. Um, so I did what so I did. But I think I could. <laughs> would you would you would you be able to tell us more about like what time of the day did you shoot where the light was like what direction was it behind her was it in front of her like some um, some bit more like like what kind of f did you shoot it at if you remember because I know it's been a while so if you don't that's totally fine I think I opened up my f stop quite a lot for these mm -hmm. um and I must have pushed it was quite a while ago and I must have pushed up my yes. f stop quite a lot um which uh -huh. I don't always I don't obviously it's good to shoot lower but I don't always mind a little bit of grain because I just think it mm -hmm. adds a little bit more to skin texture um yeah, for sure. but the, the light that day I do remember the light was just perfect it was like all diffused by clouds because I'm not really a massive fan mm -hmm. of really harsh light mm -hmm. so it was like diffused by clouds all day and it was great it was only okay. in London <laughs> well that was in London yeah it was in a, like a pool no on the corner <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, that no way. I thought that you were like on a location in Spain or something. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah, just London. <laughs> That's insane. That's great. I'd love to wow. Say it was my flat, but it wasn't. <laughs> That's that's incredible. Okay, so like I see, you know, with your shoots, you have quite a lot of pretty creative ideas. You know, you have things like shots like this one where you're um, you know, kind of like have like a plastic surgery kind of theme and you have things like this where you use like you know rainbows and and you know you have you have a lot of photos that I, I noticed as well where you have like things on the model's faces like little you know hearts you had and like those little pearls that I absolutely love. I think it's so beautiful. Um so how do you how do you come up with those ideas? Is it usually just you or do you chat to your team? Because you do have a very specific team of people that you work with. Or you know you do work with a lot of creative like makeup artists and hairstylists. So is it more like a collective idea or is there like one particular person um, that comes up with it is it like a makeup artist that is like okay I want to do it today like how do you come up with your um with um, your shoot ideas so I think like obviously this whole quarantine thing I've been like making so many ideas myself I've been writing them down like planning sheets and stuff but um I normally kind of go into something like with my vision it's mm -hmm. really it's, you know what it, it's quite different each time because sometimes like because obviously I work with Nikki and Luke quite a lot and sometimes mm -hmm. they can be like oh I really want to use this I really I'm really like want to use these because Nikki provided those little pills um mm -hmm. and we were just thinking like how can we incorporate that into everything so we had like I brought the earrings Luke had this weird I don't know this weird pearl thing to could put in the parting and it, it just kind of comes to that's really hard to answer because it comes together in different ways and I feel like whenever yeah. you work with the same team they know like how how you like to shoot and what kind mm -hmm. of things because that's quite yeah. minimal to me if you think I like, agree and, and, I, and I'm sure it also depends on the model you have because certain models work better for certain ideas yeah 100% as well. so someone just asked a question I think it's for those photos here um 
someone just asked um i think it was this one i absolutely love the spotlight photos what light did you use for those uh continuous uh, no, so this was my strobe. Um, it was just as so it's just my I have a snoot and I put my snoot on the end yeah. of my B my B1 and then oh, do you know what I'm not gonna be able to find it right now. But it's just like a little um it's like a little shape you put in, in between the snoot mm -hmm. and you just have to like kind of like direct it towards the model. Uh, yeah, but you have um, you can put loads of different shapes inside. Yeah, it looks really amazing. I've it. seen I've seen like those photos like when they came out. I think was it Retouching Academy that shared them on their Instagram? I think I saw them oh, and maybe. I was like, wow! I, I it was just incredible. I just love. I, I think what I love about your work is how crisp and how detailed it is, and there's something so sharp and so clear about it. And I think I just really I'm really drawn to it because I find like I would like my style to be like this and i feel like if there was like one way i would like to shoot beauty is like you so it's um oh, thank you it's i really like i'm so into my skin texture like that's the first and i foremost love it when i'm shooting yeah um and <laughs> do you else find, so, okay so let's uh let's just um let's just chat about it um in terms of you know so if you if you cast models right um obviously when you're shooting beauty if a girl has amazing skin but she has no texture naturally it's going to be very hard for you to add it in afterwards um so do you find you have to you have to get a certain type of girl with certain type of skin to get that look that you desire um hmm i don't think it's particularly this skin i think it's more like how the makeup is applied um okay. it's because if you can honestly the some of my best shoots there hasn't even been like any foundation on their skin mm -hmm. and then i feel like it's harder to change texture when someone's caked on makeup rather than if it actually looks like skin because that's your yes. end you want your end result to look like skin don't you mm -hmm. um absolutely because it's so easy to get rid of say you've got like a little blemish there it's so easy to just get rid of that rather than a whole like textured cakey yeah mess <laughs> and i feel like i feel like that's where working with the right team of people especially you know because for me personally when i shoot swimwear a lot of the time i work by myself i get the girls to just do their own hair and makeup i just apply loads of oil on them afterwards and i'm happy out but i think for you it's so much more of a team effort to create a proper beauty shoot because if the makeup is bad or if something is off it's going to be so much harder to fix it afterwards mm -hmm. it's not even possible because if the makeup is really shit, you will not be able to, to just fix it, you know, to just go into exactly. Photoshop and just like do it out or make it glowy. So it's so important for the makeup artist to understand how to apply um, makeup properly and how to make it as easy for you as possible. And I feel like with makeup, especially, it, it is such a fine line for the makeup artist between like being cakey and being, you know, natural and beautiful and glowy. And I find when I was mm -hmm. working on beauty myself, there was one or two makeup artists I would always come back to because their work was so nice. And every single time I shot with them, they would produce such a beautiful result. But if the makeup artist, uh, you know, I had a situation where I did like one beauty campaign ages ago and I did it with, it was, it was like the, the whole brand, they brought their own makeup artist, but the makeup artist was like a counter makeup artist, which, you know, I'm not saying I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, saying that they're all bad, but this those particular people were not the best and yeah it's, it's remember, for different occasions that's like, the thing you can do make like, it for going out different to shoot makeup. oh that's the thing it was like so much contouring and so much like you know highlighter like the model skin turned gray oh, no. and it was just um <laughs> it was just it was just it was a, just a mess and it's just like you know it shows you how much more of a team effort like a beauty shoot is where if you can get to work with the proper people it really helps. Okay, so we have another question. Um, what's your favorite modifier, beauty dish or umbrella? Um, we spoke about it a um, tiny bit in Instagram Live and it is actually quite interesting. Sorry to interrupt you. Um, Sarah here has quite a specific light set up and she's going to talk to you about it. I forgot what I said. <laughs> I think I'm <laughs> no, like you were, different you were, <laughs> Well, you told me that you mostly reflect of like a big surface. So that's what oh, I yeah, wanted yeah. to. Um, so, um, like I say, so I'll tell you my three different ones I mm -hmm. kind of use. Um, so I do have a deep, like a deep umbrella from Profoto I use. Um, that's kind of easy to set up. So it depends mm -hmm. on what I'm shooting. It might be nice. And it's a lot harsher. Um, but I, I always find the bigger light source you have, the softer, it, but the softer the light will be. That's why natural light mm -hmm. is just so amazing because the sun is so big. <laughs> um, yeah. 
but yeah, so I'll either bounce off, I'll either go through a scrim, um, so kind of like have a, a couple of lights going through a scrim, or I'll bounce off a cove, colorama, white wall, or whatever, and that'll just mm -hmm. create the, a really, really big light source. Um, so just to, just, just, to ex just to explain, when you say um, bouncing off like a colorama white wall, you mean facing the light. So if your model is here in front of you, you are here, the light is facing behind you, and it's just this big white space, right? Uh, yes, okay, so here's the colorama, and then like, here's the model. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, that like you'd bounce, you'd, you'd bounce it off that, like yes. you'd go like that, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's, so just, it's just, it's just, it's just, no, no, it's okay, it's okay. It's just for people, because, <laughs> um, just to make sure. Okay, so we have another question. Um, question for Sarah, if you may, you may, Darren, very well. Um, what is your go-to smoothing out color um, on the skin or removing color cast on the skin without ruining the texture? Color layer and frequency separation? Um, so I, my, honestly, my retouching is like, workflow is, so simple. Um, I'll obviously I'll um, clone and heal, dodge and burn, and then I'll go in with selective color for, co for anything color, um, just to kind of alter it. It's all about the minute details, and you really have to kind of train your eye over time to see these, like you know, like this. What's in the shadows? What's in the highlights? And I, I feel like over time you can see, and mm -hmm. with selective color you can just alter that slightly but it has to be like minute yeah. details to kind of get an overall nice consistent image i think would you would you usually use the same um white balance in your camera or do you adjust it depending on the shoot how does it usually work um i normally just set it to the flash white balance like okay. setting on canon and i don't think i ever change it well i obviously, I obviously change it when i do natural light but with flash okay. i just always put it on the flash setting mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's pretty good. Okay, that's great. Yay! Um, let's see. So someone um asked how to approach clients. Do you have any tips for that? Do um, you like um, um? So do you do you like any? Uh, do you ever actually approach clients? Do you message them, or do you wait for people to come to you? How does it usually work? Um. Well, a lot of the time now. Well, obviously not now because I'm not getting no work. <laughs> but um, when I <laughs> used to work, um, they I would. It, a lot of them kind of message me through Instagram which you probably wouldn't think so I mm -hmm. really wouldn't underestimate the power of direct message on Instagram even to like bigger clients because they're they'll forward you onto the right person it's like a like you'll you will get to the right place and everyone's always mm -hmm. on social media um mm -hmm. but then I, I did used to, I said to you the other day I did used to have this thing where every I don't know every Tuesday or like one day of the week I'd kind of like pencil that off and just kind of contact as many clients as possible and just kind of lay out everything on a plate for them, like my portfolio, my rates, like what to expect from me, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Um, and yeah, that, that kind of did help me in a way, but I feel like mm -hmm. Instagram is the way forward, honestly. Mm -hmm. So usually, and you obviously don't have to share if you don't want to, but usually when you approach clients, you just go like, hey, this is my work. If there is anything that you ever want to shoot with me, this is this is me, hello, I'm here. And yeah. do you find do you find that you get a lot of responses to that, or do you still usually get more from Instagram? I'm sorry, one second. Może ci zamknąć drzwi. Sorry. Um, so I think what so what was that? So if I get um more from email, so do you or get so yeah? So do you get like a lot of responses when you do approach people yourself? Do you, did you actually like are you able to book jobs from that, or is it still usually people reaching out to you? Um, I do think it has become more people reaching out to me but I do find I I get more of a response from Instagram direct message which is really strange because <laughs> you would think mm -hmm. it would be the opposite but obviously I think, after I think the direct message will go to Inst will go to email and kind of I feel like I there. feel like it's not that I feel like it's not that unusual because I feel like you know when I look at your portfolio on Instagram it's such a strong um you know, it's such a strong portfolio to to have. I'll just show it again here. So, you know, you see your work laid out so clearly and you, you do it in sets of three as well, um, which is, I think, really nice because it's like very nice and clear. Um, so I feel like it makes sense because so many brands 
nowadays are online as it is anyway right so it's like instagram has become this big hub and everybody wants to be on instagram and i think especially particularly because you have a decent following like your work is so clean you know it's so beautifully laid out i think it makes sense for people to try and contact you because i feel i feel personally as well that i get more benefit from you know my youtube channel and my instagram rather than um rather than my website. I feel like my website is only there to like to sell my presets and that's about it. But nobody really goes there to like look at my work. No, well, you know, everyone is always Instagram. on social media. But like, that's the thing. Like, I, I kind of feel like, you know, that the websites, like the going on websites is like the thing of the past. Um, yeah. Do you ever, so do you ever actually have, do you ever like print your portfolio? Do you have like a printed portfolio that you go to like meetings with and stuff or not really? Uh, I used to, um, but it just got so expensive because I was just because I shoot so much and it just got so expensive mm -hmm. updating it. It's like new work, so now I just do it on an iPad or my laptop. Like I, I wouldn't do it on my phone because I just don't think it's very professional. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but there's nothing wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it on digitally because if you're always updating it, it just makes sense. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. Like uh, that's the same. Like if if a brand ever messages me or emails me, for example, I always send them to my Instagram instead of my website now. Yeah. And I would probably like if I went to meetings because I feel like printing is so much effort, and I don't think people appreciate it that much anymore. So I feel like no, it is so beautiful I, when you get it done, but it's just cost effectively. It's digital the way. Okay, so Darren asked another question. I'm not sure if you can answer that. Um, so he said, any makeup brands right now that don't irritate the skin and are easy to remove, but still produce a smooth application? I feel like that's a very vague question. I don't know if you can shine some light. Do you mean or... like for beauty photography? Like what kinds do you I think do you so, yeah. I um, think so. So I, I find like retouching kind of like creamier products um, always looks better for the skin rather than like loads and loads of powder because creamier kind of just sits with the texture rather than on it mm. i'm not a makeup artist but i find that when i'm retouching yeah okay lighter, that's fair. the lighter the better so paul robinson is asking sarah the raw versus coverage concept you did with sophia sparrow is incredible how did you come up with that idea um i can't take any credit for that that was james that was james Molloy. um so that was actually do you know so what? I, I presume it's this one, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a really spontaneous look, like right at the end of the day. And mm -hmm. we were just like, right, let's just try it. Like, she's got the most amazing freckly skin. Let's just try it. And then only recently, because I did this this shoot like maybe two years ago. Um, and only recently, like, it's just blown up and mm -hmm. everyone is tagging James and it just looks yeah, so good. I just see, I, I'm just showing people. Um, yeah, so this is people that recreated the look, right? This is incredible. I love yeah. this. She's so beautiful. Yeah, I love oh it. God. Um, I love how yeah, you did it so a little bit differently as well. It's like, like, mm. like that, the guy before did it with his acne, and I just thought it was such a nice idea to kind of show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's really nice. Wow, that's incredible. But yeah, it's just like, it's just in terms of details. I just think your work is just so clean. And you know, the way it's just like, the way you see like the whole skin texture is just really beautiful. So when you retouch, um, do you um, do you do everything in Photoshop? Do you use any other pro like programs? How, how does it usually work? Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll shoot like tethered to capture raw, which is like the Lightroom equivalent. Um, and I'll normally do, I mean, even kind of, color grading I don't do too much of that I'll play around with the contrast like luminosity that kind of thing but the rest I'll just do in photoshop um because mm -hmm. I just feel like you don't have to overcomplicate it mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh, I agree I'll, I'll, I agree I, yeah you can like bring back shadows and like highlights I think that's quite a powerful thing to do in raw yeah, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, that's the thing because it's like you know a lot of people that don't use um, Lightroom, for example, um, Camera Raw is basically exactly the same as Lightroom, and uh, actually, you can you can literally use like presets and everything else as well in in Camera Raw, which is kind of interesting. I don't think everybody knows that. Okay, so um, someone asked, what kind of um, so this uh, this this person asked here, hello there. I want to ask, what kind of clients do you work uh, for? Means which brands so i guess they're asking which brands are you working with um 
Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I do, I work a lot with Primark, which I just love working with them because I just feel like they're, they're very on my level and they kind of understand me. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's just such a lovely team. Um, mm-hmm. I've done a little bit of work for By Terry, um, which is a makeup brand. Um, oh God, it was so long ago, I missed work. <laughs> um, <laughs> It just oh, feels it just feels like a different life like it it feels like a different lifetime at this point. I am Honestly. so ingrained and you know I just I've I've been like only recently getting into this this position now where I'm just like I'm like I don't even know what I do anymore. I just I just go on walks and I just exercise and I just do lives. It's just like this is what oh, I am right now. <laughs> I'm going to pick up my camera and be like which button do I press to take a picture? <laughs> you're like you're like what's happening? What is this thing? Um <laughs> that's definitely okay so someone asked uh, Bella Snow asked what is your uh, one lens that you can't go um that 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 uh, sorry what is your one lens that's your go-to lens for everything or your favorite lens um I definitely think the 100 mil 2.8 for beauty is just mm-hmm. spot on because I love macro and you can pull out just the way you need to be mm-hmm. yeah yeah macro um and um mil. just to clarify which camera do you use Oh, sorry. So my, I use a Canon 5 DSR mm-hmm. with the Canon okay. 100mm. Yeah. And what was your, so, so when you started photography, like what was your, um, what was your first camera? How did you, how did you get into, like, did you have many different cameras before that or how did it work? Like, do you upgrade your, your gear regularly or do you have the same camera for like years? How does it usually work? Um, yeah, I do. I don't think I, I don't really change it often. Um, mm-hmm. So I I started with a, oh God, I think it was a 70D, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was when I was at uni. Um, and I, I, I learned at uni that a full frame is probably better for everything. So yeah. I upgraded to a, oh my God, what was it? Was it a 60? Is that full frame? <laughs> I actually can't remember because I sold it. I sold it in I the space know. of like two weeks. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. then I found, about, I found out about 5D. And then I bought okay. 5D. So I had the 5D Mark three before the 5D SR. Um, I, f- I, I just I feel like five. I feel like 5D Mark three is such a like in the Mark four such a popular camera. I feel like back in the day everybody I knew was using it. It's so interesting. And now obviously a lot of people are like switching to Sony and mirrorless. Mm-hmm. Do you have any Do you have any thoughts on mirrorless, or are you not really into you know in general just into gear, or how does it how does it work for you? I'm putting you on the hotspot. Um, I'm sorry. I've never tried it. <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried it, and do you know what? I, I probably I, I would, but I've never. I, I don't really look into it too much because I'm just comfortable with what I'm using. I don't know if that's yeah. a good thing or not, but I think you know. Do you know? I feel like knowing your camera very well is very important, and I feel like it's really good to have that where you know your gear, you know how to use it, you're comfortable with it. I don't think it's necessary for you to like upgrade and try new things. Um, some yeah. people love it, and but it's not for everyone. So I totally understand that. And I like, have been, I've been like, sh- like doubling, oh, go on. No, no, <laughs> I've been go like it. doubling no, in like a um, medium format. So I'll use on like when a client can afford it, I'll hire a, ha- a phase one, which I'm in love with. I just love it so much because it's just the detail is just incredible. Um, but obviously I can't afford one, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> and um, how do you find the difference between the 5D and the phase one? Is there like a huge difference in quality and like in details and all this kind of stuff? Um, I think, yeah, like a hundred percent. The quality is just ridiculous. It's like you don't even need that much quality unless you're like blowing it up big. Um, mm-hmm. But th- this is something about like medium format, which is really I love. However, um, with their 120 mil macro lens, it's just so hard to focus, like because the, the I've, depth of field I've is used so it. much. <laughs> yeah, I've used it. So I I got to test it out when I was in Cape Town two years ago because I met with guys that were like um they were the distributor for Phase One, and I remember shooting on the 120, and I was shooting on the 100 megapixel um Phase One. And oh my God, it was crazy. I was shooting on like F16. I was focusing on the model's eye and her ear was literally completely out of focus. It was nuts. It's so mad, it's so mad. Okay, so out of the so out of the work that you have here on your Instagram, which photos did you take with with the phase one? Um, um, so these purple ones were phase one. Okay. Um, yeah, it's Primark. 
Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, keep scrolling. Like, not a lot because it's oh, mm-hmm. these purple ones as well. That blue one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. The, so, so these ones below as well for, by Terry, the the blonde girl. If you oh yeah, okay. Boy. okay. Yeah. Go. Okay. Yeah. It's actually I mean, very like, interesting because you know because I mean it's incredible to see that regardless of the camera, like you know, I would never. I would never be able to tell the difference per se, you know, like, I mean, image like this, yeah. I would have said, like, I would be like, okay, this could be like a phase one image because there's so much detail, but you still got on the Canon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like a lot of my work is just on my Canon. Um, I feel That's like you saying. really can't tell, like, unless it's like blown up yeah. so big, you can't, the only thing I think you can really tell with is you, like the, the eyes just look so much more crisp to me. But that's probably just okay <laughs> okay fair enough I actually like I think genuinely I wouldn't be able to tell the difference I think like your work is so crisp in general but it's obviously different when you have um you know when you're working on the images that yourself it's a bit different oh, that's one um, thing it takes so much longer to work on medium format images <laughs> with retouching I would it takes say so, much longer. so I would say so so for retouching what's your goal to do you use um dodge and burn do you use frequency separation how does it usually work for you um, so I'll um, heal and like healing um, healing tool and clone first. I like kind of mm-hmm. clean up the image, um, and then yeah. I'll go in with dodge and burn. I'm just mm-hmm. not a frequency separation girl. I'm just not. <laughs> yeah, I just that's okay. I can't get like I think like it, I've used it like a couple of times to kind of like really minor things, um, but I just think it can make it look really flat if not used properly. Um, yeah, and it's just I feel like it's better. It's very, it's very volatile. It's like, it's much easier to screw it up, I feel like. So it's like, yeah. if you are beginning, it's easier to work in dodge and burn and get a nicer result. Because I feel like also with dodging and burning, because it's such a meticulous process, it really slows you down. So it mm-hmm. takes you, you know, it takes you some time. So actually somebody asked a question, Sean asked a question asking, how long on average would you spend on retouch? So how, how long would you spend per image? Um, About like two to three hours um probably longer when it's closer up just because there's so much mm-hmm. more detail um yeah so like two to three hours kind of thing yeah I was actually I just shot my um my self-portrait the other day for my friend's channel it's going to be up sometime this week on Irene's channel by the way um but Ooh. I was um, <laughs> I was yeah so it was like a self-portrait thing and oh my God, it was just the skin texture. There was so much skin texture. And I was like trying <laughs> to retouch like my forehead bit. And then my forehead isn't bad. It's like, I don't have any skin texture there. And it took me like almost an hour because I just, oh, so I got, I just got my tablet. I wanted to let you guys know that I am thinking of doing like a live retouch thing because I'm I'm trying to set it up. It's very confusing. I don't have many information of like how to set it up, how to use it because I've been using a trackpad for a very long time, which is ridiculous. Um, oh, not <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> oh, nuts. but I can see I can see like I can see how much nicer it is to retouch on the tra- on the on the tablet because uh, the one that I got as well is like a like a screen tablet, so you can actually see it on the screen. So it is very nice, uh, but it just it just takes so much time to just like get used to it and like know how to set up the brush and all this kind of stuff. So it's definitely a, it's definitely a, what's a trackpad? The trackpad is the the trackpad mouse thing that you have on your computer. Um, so um, Danielle asked, how many shoots do you do per week slash month? Obviously not right now. And right now you're probably not doing anything, but like your usual kind of average month. Um, so I would say two to three a week if not more depending on like what I need to kind of shoot I don't know if you know um Nikki Nikki makeup on Instagram but she does these Sunday tutorials which I tend to shoot kind of Mm. all the time um and she always we always shoot them so that's kind of like like a thing I do every week but then I've got my clients on top of that and then I've got like I, I test as well I keep testing all the time yeah this is Nikki yeah, so uh, this is Nikki. So this is she's one of your uh, main makeup artists that you work with, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, so okay. So this is something that you touched up, uh, touched on, and I think it's really important. Um, how important is testing in in your own personal work? Like, how often do you do it? Do you recommend people do it or people skip it? Because like you know, in my in my time when or you know whenever I speak to people, they're always asking me. They're like, oh how do I just, you know, get paid work? I don't really want to test. 
And I always try to explain to people how important testing is for me, but I think it's kind of better when it comes from other sources as well. So I'm not the only one. Yeah, I think sense. testing is so important. It's so important to keep, because th this is what gets you the work. Um, and mm -hmm. it keeps you like not all the time you get you get clients where you you actually like love the job like you like it's hard to explain like you you can go into a job and you're not in control so it's nice mm -hmm. to keep having that so I I just test all the time to kind of keep myself creative and keep my my workflow kind of going so clients can hopefully see it that's the thing and I feel like I feel like when you're doing your own tests you get a chance to express yourself and show your full mm -hmm. potential because unfortunately a lot of the time when you work with clients it's not very exciting work a lot of people want the same simple things and yeah. you know simple is not bad that's not what i'm saying but it's just a lot of the time it's just not that exciting for your portfolio and if you keep pushing out the same work you know the same backdrops with like similar models it's just not very exciting but when you get a chance to do tests it's so much more helpful i feel like okay so 100% how often so if you're let's say if you have time because obviously it all depends on your client work how often would you test would you test like once a week or i know it obviously depends if you if you for example have like i don't know three page shoots a week would you be able to squeeze in any tests that month um do you know what? it also depends on the retouching probably yes probably if i have a three day i'll i'll test um mm -hmm. it, it's the like you can sh you can shoot but it's the retouching which gets me with mm -hmm. my workflow because sometimes I can have like I can have like a 50 image deadline which will completely take over my month and then sometimes I can have like five image deadline which will take like I don't know like three days so mm -hmm. I think you have to kind of work in the whole of your work into mm -hmm. when you can test and when you can shoot and so would you ever would you ever outsource uh, outsource retouching when you're really busy would you have like certain retouchers that you go for uh yeah I've, i have started to um which was kind of hard for me to kind of hand over my work because <laughs> i'm just so used to it mm. um but i've started using luca i think you've used you've used her luca yes um i'll yeah. show you guys luca so this yeah, is luca here. i feel like she just gets me oh yeah that's that's your work right uh here. i don't know i can't see is it <laughs> Right. It is. Yes, it is. Sorry, I don't. I didn't share your screen. Oh, that's my bad. Oh. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> you're like, you're like, what are you showing me? Because I was just like on the page, but I forgot that it doesn't show unless I show you show it to you guys. So apologies for that. <laughs> yeah, Luca's work is absolutely incredible. She is. She's amazing, and she is very. I feel like you know when you're giving somebody else, um, you know, your work to retouch. I feel the most important thing is to be able to communicate between like you and their retoucher because it's easy to just you know mm -hmm. give somebody images and be like you know just do it I feel like also the good thing is if you work with the same retouchers over and over they kind of know your style and they know what your work is like mm -hmm. so at least they will be able to deliver results that you know you will like um when you work with retouchers would you usually have many um you know corrections because I when I usually send my work to retouchers because I do it for myself I'm usually like genuinely just like yeah i'm just happy but would you have a lot of clients maybe um, asking for a lot of like reviews and just changing things around would you ever have problems with that where you have to keep coming back and keep changing things um funnily i actually haven't really had that with luca um just because i tend to kind of direct her so she she just does like the bare minimum like kind of clean up kind of thing so i give yes. her like the tips kind of like ready for her just to kind of clean up and dodge and burn and then mm -hmm. I've I'll probably when they come back to me I'll probably kind of put the end kind of stamp on it but it's not much it's probably like a little bit sharpened and I don't know yeah. like a color correction here and there or something but normally it's mm -hmm. perfect because she's so good and would you ever have for your own personal retouching would you ever have problems where for example the client is expecting for the skin to be super like blurred out or retouched or is there a way for yeah. you also if, if you have that <laughs> is there a way for you to handle it is there a way for you to be like okay i can do it but maybe this is not the best route like would you would you discuss it yeah. would you try and discuss it and negotiate it or do you just go with it and you just like blur everything <laughs> oh god this is like my worst nightmare so like <laughs> if they say this to me i'll be i'll be like okay um so like 
I'll kind of like give them kind of reference images to like what it could look like if you want that kind of thing yeah. to kind of put them off and then, yeah and then um just and find they, the word and blurred then, image just like fully blurred yeah. and you're like <laughs> what it's gonna look like yeah exactly and then um and then I'll be like um if you want like skin texture that will like sometimes I'll say like it will sell your your product more if it's more relatable as well mm -hmm. um but it's hard because they're the client and they're paying you and you just have to do what they want so sometimes you just have to do that, unfortunately. Yeah, and then just cry, cry while you, you're while you're yeah. doing this thing. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. want it. So Ivy Chen asked a really good question, um, tips for more dynamic beauty posing. Oh, okay. Um, this is going to get really embarrassing, isn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> Not at all. So, so is there I'm anything that, is there, because obviously, you know, I think, I think we need to say it, that like a lot of girls that you work with are very experienced. You don't really work with a lot of you know new starting out girls, but is there anything you can they can do to maybe like bring out um, you know poses, or is there anything that could be done to maybe help them bring it out? Um, I think like a good comfortable vibe on set is definitely one of the first and foremost things you need to think about because if a model's mm -hmm. not comfortable, it's just it it's just not an experience for anyone, and you can tell mm -hmm. through the camera. Um, but with like posing wise, I think. I always try and I try and get like the weirder pose of the better, and mm -hmm. I'll I, I'll I myself I'll, like I'll I'll turn my camera to kind of make it weird on my more macro mm -hmm. shots, which you can probably see in some yeah. of the closer ones. Um, and would you? Yeah, a lot, would you? Would you ever have, for example, like sorry to cut you off? Um, would you ever have maybe like reference shots or anything like where you could actually show it to the model if she's unsure? You could be like, okay, this is what I want, like a mood board almost. Um, yeah, so I'll on definitely on page shoots I'll have like a poly board of just loads of different like posing images. But also a little tip. Let's see if I have it. So on my watch, I don't know if you can see. Ooh, mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I've got all okay. my like favorite poses and I just kind of oh, like wow. go through and like <laughs> and just oh, like kind incredible. of show them. Because that way okay, I've like got very... my thing on my camera and I can just be like, can you do this? <laughs> You're like, this is my watch. This is what I want you to do. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're like time limit. <laughs> no, it makes sense. I mean, you know, I usually do it on my phone, but it's it's exactly the same thing. It's, it's you know, I feel like in general, if you guys are studying out and you're trying to work with models that are not, not that experienced, I feel like producing a strong mood board beforehand so you can show it to the model mm -hmm. on set being, you know, especially because I feel like posing hands is such a big like, issue where girls are like, or like... Mm -hmm. And yeah, like, like you just have to be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> That's a beautiful image. Like, you're like, <laughs> you don't really want that. This is not what we want. This is not the images that we're going for. So I, I feel like absolutely. delicate, delicate is better. But God, no one has taken yes, picture of me. <laughs> exactly. And another thing is like for hands, for example, you never like you always get the model to like not push her hands into her face because like you know if you have it like this versus when you have it like this. Not a look. Yeah. This is not a look. Yeah. So definitely just try subtle things. You know, we have the like, I have a headache face. Oh yeah. Which the I Instagram will, headache. Which, the Instagram <laughs> headache. Yeah. It's just like I've been on Instagram for too long. But it just pulls the hair like it just pulls the face back a tiny bit. And also so there is there's things. But I feel like if you guys don't know what you want to do and if you're starting with beauty photography, I think the good thing is to go on like Pinterest or you know instagram yeah. maybe save photos like if, if they love your work they can save your photos and be like this is what i want this is the reference shot because i feel like yeah. you know sometimes models when they can't see each other it's pretty or you know in front of the camera it's pretty difficult but when they can see like a reference shot and be like okay so this is what i can do and then they can be like headache yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's good yeah it's good, definitely good to have guidance definitely because then they kind mm -hmm. of get what like vibe you're on like what your work's like as well Absolutely. So uh, we have another question. Uh, do you ever use parabolic softbox? If yes, how much? Uh, how how is it different from an octabox? Um, a parabolic octabox. What is that? Is it like an so, umbrella? Do they mean? I, I don't know. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. Um, maybe I maybe that's a thing. I just don't know what it is. I do. Okay. I use a parabolic umbrella. Okay. So yeah, maybe maybe yeah, maybe that's what they mean. It's just like, is there a difference between like a parabolic umbrella and an octobox? That's what we'll we'll make it. Is there a difference <laughs> between an octobox and or like how does it affect, for example, the highlights? Because I, I saw myself personally when I was shooting beauty, um, I loved shooting with the umbrella because I find like it gave me this kind of midpoint between 
shooting beauty dish and shooting um, um, softbox. Because uh, I feel like with softbox, the light is so soft and just so blown out and you don't have like any like dark, uh, you know, harsh shadows or anything like that. And with softbox, it's the other way around. It's just very extreme, like, um, you know, highlights and shadows. Mm -hmm. Sorry, with beauty dish. But with the parabolic, it's somewhere kind of in the mi in the middle. So so do you have anything to, to add to that? Um, yeah, I think like along the lines of what you said, um, like anything with the light, like kind of face in, because an octobox, the, light, the light's going straight towards the model, isn't it? Rather than mm. if you're like bouncing off the parabolic thing, it's more like a, it is a lot more of a softer th effect. And I think it would just really work well for beauty rather mm. than like a harsher. Saying that though, like some of the really harsh, like that the one with the shapes with the snoot, that was such harsh lighting, but it just worked. So mm. like, don't take kind of like soft lighting for Bible because it's you can like play around definitely. Would you say that when you're starting photography, like beauty photography, is it easier to, start um, like what what would be the lighting setup that would be the easier to start with like to play around with um i would say oh if i was starting off i'd probably use a parabolic umbrella just because it's so number one it's just so easy to put up anywhere like and if you're starting mm -hmm. out you're probably not gonna have a studio of your own or you might just have one in your home who knows um but then a, a octobox is quite it's quite a tricky thing to put up, especially like if you're traveling different locations. Um, mm -hmm. But like shooting, I always just love shooting it like the light away, like not mm -hmm. direct. I think that's definitely yeah. my kind of jam. Not saying that I it agree. doesn't work the other way, but that's my preference. I feel like in general, any light that kind of um, makes it look like a window light is always the nicer because it kind of imitates natural light. And I feel yeah. like that, that's why that's why I've always been drawn to your work. And I also, um, there's another photographer as well. She's a German photographer. Um, her name is Lina Tesch. And I'll actually show you guys her profile. Um, so this is Luca. I'll show you Lina. Um, she does, there we go. She does um, loads of fashion oh, photography. Yeah. Love so her stuff, yeah, her stuff is really amazing. And she does um, a lot of, you know, um, outdoor flash as well but she just does it so well and she integrates her flash beautiful. it is it's amazing I, I love her work so it's just like she works with a lot of um, flash on set but she just does it in a way that's so natural and so subtle and even with her studio work it's just it just it just feels like natural light mm -hmm. but better and like, that's what I want like this is what I would love for my work in the, in the future like you know her sets and and the stuff that she does is just oh, so it's like dreamy it's gorgeous it's very gorgeous yeah it's like she's one of my favorite um like fashion photographers yeah. Ooh, i love that uh i can't hear you is this just me sorry mm -hmm. I, uh, I mute my mic oh, uh, yes. I, I mute my mic <laughs> I, my earphones went dead Oh. Um, yeah, so oh, with me. Does work. She just uses um, natural light so beautifully. Or oh, sorry, um, uses strobe, kind of like natural light. And I feel like if I ever was to use strobe personally, like in my work and like swimmer and so on, I would probably try and and use it in a way that it looks like natural light. And I feel like that's why I've been also drawn to your work because it kind of looks the the, the light setups that you use kind of make it look like a window light as well, which I I, I really yeah. love. Um, I okay. think like it'd be nice for a scrim kind of thing if it was like location that'd be something really yes. nice and soft. I agree. Okay, so Mr. Lenz asked, "When we're touching, are you often giving a specific? Uh, are you often given a specific set, set of tasks, or are you told to vaguely clean it up? Do you sometimes have uh, creative control over how much is actually retouched?" Um, so I think I'm pretty lucky in this respect that um, well, I, the clients tend to come to me like for or the how the way I retouch um because I think that's what kind of brings brings them in like the skin texture kind of the vibe I go for um mm. and I'll normally do exactly what I do with every image with my retouching and then send them back and then it'll be like a couple of rounds of things just like makeup fixes or like I don't know like just preferences on their half rather than like skin and like lighting and whatever it's just yeah. that little thing like that. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so we have another question. 
what are your some uh, what are some of your favorite backdrop colors for beauty shoots do you have any preference i think i think i think probably pink and blue because i see quite a lot but... <laughs> i'm beige <laughs> beige yeah that's, that's like the thing. Uh, three shots. i'm just looking at my color armies right now they're literally just here <laughs> um yeah. i think like mainly like pale colors like kind of pastel -y mm -hmm. colors is my kind of jam yeah it's just, I, I agree i feel like it doesn't overwhelm the image as well it kind of brings out the model instead of and i feel like when you work especially with like pinks and beiges it kind of works so nicely with the skin tone as well yeah it's like so, a, it's like a crowd pleaser color for every skin tone i agree okay so i want to have a quick chat with you about those images here because we had we actually had a chat about them in and in the instagram live stream but probably many people haven't seen it so um, you were telling me how you achieved those images and I want you to talk us through it because I think it's pretty, pretty incredible because I actually thought that it was post-production, but it's not, it's actually in camera. So tell us how you did it. Um, so, um, it's so easy to do. Um, <laughs> so all you need is a flash and a continuous light. Um, and you should really kind of match your strobe mm -hmm. to nearish the output of your continuous light. Um, and you put it on a low shutter and uh, like on your, your camera on a low shutter speed mm -hmm. and then you'll like the strobe will catch the sharpness of the model and then the you while so your shirt is quite long and while mm -hmm. that's happening you use your camera and you like kind of jerk your camera to mm -hmm. kind of get this weird like trail effect mm -hmm. and the continuous light that's what will pick that up if that makes yeah. any sense I think that's pretty incredible because I, I genuinely thought that it was just some sort of a Photoshop effect. I mean, I know you can do that thing in camera, but I just never thought that somebody would actually do it for beauty because, yeah, it was still quite a quite a new concept for me. So I think like seeing it there and then when you spoke about it on our Instagram live, I was like, wow, this is incredible. This is magic. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does work. It works more. It works well when there's like highlights in the image. So if you see on this one, it's got like gems on it. Yes. And then the other one has got like, literally glitter all over her face so it picks up highlights mm -hmm. really well mm -hmm. fair enough okay so we have another question uh, we are coming close to an hour so we'll probably uh we still have so many questions we'll we'll, we'll get through it we'll, we'll get there okay um what are the main things to look out for when retouching your photos um so i think i think you I used to be this kind of thing like get rid of everything like get rid of like that freckle get rid of that mole like whatever um and I think keep like literally keep what the model looks like and then get rid of things that wouldn't be there like for the mm -hmm. long term like blemishes stray hairs um like mas like maybe like mascara that's gone wrong mm -hmm. um so like that's my kind of that's what you need to look out for things that like wouldn't be there if mm -hmm it wasn't for you know <laughs> that's fair enough i don't like to change people yes that's 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 correct i was just i think we had this conversation before where i feel like there's so many times where especially with models that do beauty like people change their facial features you know they change their like noses their mouths and then they like look at the photos mm -hmm. and they're like this is not even me i don't even know who this is this is this is mm -hmm. crazy okay so we have another question from jamie as well um, how did you discover your own visual style? Oh, um, I think actually this is quite recent. I've only discovered it. Um, mm. And I still don't even think I have a style, but people tell me I do, so hey. <laughs> um, but I did I did fashion up until literally this Christmas. And I've only just started saying I'm only a beauty photographer. Okay. Um, so I think it's been like a long journey of just like finding out what I like, what works for me, like how I like my workflow. Mm -hmm. um and that is just kind of plain old beauty <laughs> yeah studio yeah. beauty that's great that's amazing okay tracy's asking are you saying that the high end re re are you saying that the high end retouch results uh, with perfect skin is with only dodging and burning uh, dodging and burning um so i'll definitely like clone like use the clone tool and the um healing tool like mm -hmm. before that to kind of clean up everything um what else will i do i'll kind of I'll, I'll kind of use selective color um for my you know like color corrections and stuff mm -hmm. um one thing i do look out for actually if hands are involved with beauty they're like 99 percent on every picture like always a different color so it's always nice to kind of like mask them out and kind of match them to the rest mm -hmm. um 
what else do I do? I mean, I'll probably sharpen and put like a slight grain on my image as well. Do you ever do, finish off. do you ever have so when you export photos and you have your final edit, would you ever recolor grade it afterwards, like on your phone before you put it up on Instagram or? Um, so I'll when I've done it in Photoshop, I'll put it back into capture. Um, and I'll kind of look at them all together. Actually, this is one thing I do do actually. So after I've retouched it, I'll put them into capture and then I'll put them all next to each other, like how they would be on my website or Instagram. Mm -hmm. And I'll see like what's not looking consistent next to them. So if one background's looking a bit more like darker or like more blue, I'll kind of like really, really slightly like try and match that. But that's yeah. kind of, I don't do much with color that's, really. I think, you know, that's, that's the thing I feel like when you start photography, you depend so much, like you would depend heavily on Photoshop, but then as you start improving in your work, it mm. makes it easier for you to do more in camera and less in Photoshop. So I feel like you can kind of tell when somebody is a really great artist, when they kind of come to a point where they, they don't really need to use Photoshop or they have to use it minimally to just like, you know, just really do those final touches. But in general, everything is done in camera and it's done properly. The yeah. light properly and it's just it's such a big for me personally it's such a big tell of someone's skills when you can show the raw and you can just see that it's just a great image and, and that's about it yeah I feel like a lot of people go into this thinking like oh I'll just retouch that oh, I'll just fix it later yeah. and that's like a really bad mindset because mm -hmm. it's more work for you at the end of the day <laughs> absolutely I agree so Doko TV says seriously I love your work thank you um, <laughs> Will this video be available after it ends to watch again? Yes, it will be. It will be up on my channel. I'll leave it there so you guys can watch it if you missed it. Um, somebody is asking, what's your go-to beauty light setup? We did speak about it earlier on. So if you did miss it, you will be able to re-watch this video and check it out because we did kind of discuss all the setups and I just don't want to go over the same questions over and over. How? So Marcelo was asking, how often, if at all, um, do you work with people when traveling and how should you reach out to them? Um, so I worked, um, I worked with, I don't really travel to be honest. Um, hopefully I will more. Um, but right I've, <laughs> uh, no, definitely not right now. <laughs> the furthest I go into the park next to me. Yes. Um, but yeah, I went to LA recently and I reached out to a couple of brands there and I would, honestly, I just Instagram message and it gets you so far because you just, you let them know you're in the country, like you let them know what you can offer mm -hmm. and that's, one of the best ways and then instagram message is a great way to get into the right email yeah so I, feel find. Like, I feel like in general getting like into instagram like finding models on instagram finding creative to work mm. on it like i feel like instagram is such a more efficient and faster way to reach out to people because mm -hmm. with email although i do find that sometimes if you want to work with like specific creatives especially like makeup artists and stuff sometimes it is easier to reach them by email because they tend to be they tend to be checking it more often for work uh while with mm -hmm. the kind it can kind of slip into like you know there are other messages because you know i'm sure you're the same it's like there's so many people usually messaging me on a daily basis to like and it goes directly to my other messages that i don't even yeah. see it i don't see it for weeks and then people message me i'm like okay sorry yeah me too <laughs> seven weeks later it's like hello thank you thank you for your mention in, in, in your story oops um <laughs> So that's that's where we at. Okay, Paul asked, based on what you know, uh, based on what you know now, what do you wish you had known when you were starting out? Oh, um, probably like what I went to before. That there's just no need to overcomplicate things, and you don't need to do what everyone else is doing. Um, if you find something that works for you, just go with it and like learn around that rather than taking it for gospel what someone else is doing. Definitely. Okay. And I feel the less the less you worry about other people, the more productive you can be. And the less I, I find when I was in the stage where I was doing photography and I was comparing myself to others, it would be such a toxic environment for myself. And oh, I yeah, would, 100%. You, know, you get so worked up and you're like so counterproductive with your time and with your energy because it just goes it just goes into your head and you just you start getting into this mindset of like, I'm useless. I can't do anything. I'm, I suck at photography and it's just so pointless. It's just, it doesn't do anything for you. So it's like, actually there was people in my life where like, we know photographers that I was following where I would get to a point where I would just block them. And it is a, it's, it, it's a shitty thing to do from like one point, but at the same time, 
just removing them from my life completely made it so much easier for me to. Just yeah, I've done. Well, I haven't. I haven't. I've unfollowed a lot of people who just. Yeah. And do you know what? I've cut down on my my Instagram kind of intake a lot because I just don't think it's healthy. Like you're just yeah. comparing yourself. That's everyone. the thing. I find like I find nowadays with my Instagram, I only follow maybe like two hundred people because because I spend so much time on social media and before because. I invest myself so much into it. I want to make sure that the people that I follow bring some sort of a value into my life. It's either like inspiration, yeah, they're my friends or something, but it's not just, you know, just random strangers where like I follow some like travel bloggers and some other people and they were just so, it was just so toxic where I would look at their life and I'm like, oh, I wish I was like them. And I'm like, this is just not good for you. This yeah. is not you that, It's not a bad thing though. It's not a bad thing because at the end of the day, it's your Instagram and you can follow who you want. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, uh, oh, this is actually my my video editor, Capture Feels. Um, Baha. Um, is it okay to consult the models for any makeup allergies against a specific product to let the makeup artist know? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I think that's quite an important thing. Um, that the, if the model's got anything they're allergic to, they shouldn't kind of just stay silent, I guess. Yeah. Um, same with anything else. Like, if the model's not comfortable with anything on set, I wouldn't want them to do it. Mm -hmm. absolutely i agree okay um let's see if we have any more questions because we're over an hour now so we'll slowly wrap it up um so okay michael has a pretty complex question i feel like uh, how much do i charge clients for my photography service i feel like when i had this i'm sure um you know i, I don't know what's your point of view on this but i think from my point of view you have to charge what you think you're worth um you know when i started photography i charged ridiculously like little but you have to keep in mind that when you um quote people for a shoot is the usage included um is your time in the studio like do you have to organize everything beforehand because a lot of clients you know ask you to like help me with what models hey help me find styling help me find this so does there is there any extra preparation that comes into the shoot do you have to rent any gear um and then after the shoot, how much retouching is there? How much time will you spend mm -hmm. you know, selecting your images? And try and work out an hourly wage that works for you, basically. I think that's mm -hmm. that's the best advice I can give. How about yeah, you? Yeah, de definitely like like the usage of images because that can really like bump up your price without even knowing how to do it. <laughs> like it's, I, I use this thing online um, called a photography usage, I can't even remember what it's called, photography usage calculator. It just comes up like one of the first things and it's so handy. Yes. And you just add that on top of your rate. So then uh, Mr. Lenz asked, how do you base your rate? Uh, what are the factors that influence... I'm oh, sorry, my Siri is like, no, no, Siri, go away. <laughs> she's like, hello. <laughs> when I ask her to shut up, she never works. But right now she's like, yes, I'm listening. Like, no, go away. Um, so, okay, Mr. Lenz is asking, how do you base your rate? What are the factors that influence the amount you charge? Uh, as Is it per hour, per image? Yes, this is what we just talked about. I don't know if there's any any specific ways you, you price. Um, so maybe if you can chat about that. Um, I wouldn't, I, I would say maybe not per hour, that the main kind of two things I have is half day and full day, right? Um, and also if travel was, if I ever had to travel to a shoot, I would charge, the travel day as a half day shoot because I can't work that day. Um, what else? Could, um, would you, would you have, like? Would you have a given amount of images that you give, for example, for half a day and full day? Like, how many images would you usually give out for a certain like flat fee? Would there be like two, three? Because obviously, with it with beauty, because it comes, you know, it takes you so much time to edit them. Mm -hmm. um, it obviously will affect the fee. So, how does it usually look like in terms of beauty? Like, do you only offer like? as I said, a few images because it's obviously quite. Um, so that will like come in, that will, the amount of images will come under like the usage and the retouching fee. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, like say you'll, say you're retouching five images compared to 30 images. You can totally like, you can totally like bump people price yeah. with the usage of that image and the retouching. And do you find, is there any particular like amount of images that people usually go for in terms of beauty? Is there like any certain number that is kind of like the standard of like the amount of people, like the amount of images that people request? Um, yeah, yes, but no. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, so, is there like any kind of like, is there like a, like a certain number that occurs more than the other? Let's put it this way. Probably between 10 to 20. But then mm -hmm. it could be five, it could be 50. So it yeah. depends on the athletes they need. 
How would you how would you handle retouching fifty images if it was three hours each? I'm just trying to calculate it in my head. That's so much. Uh, honestly, my whole January was not fair. <laughs> Wow. I had like a whole month of retouching, but I will just be like firing it out to retouchers. I'll be like, I don't want to deal with the shit. Just take it, take it away from me. <laughs> oh, uh, I do do that. I've tried to start doing that. Um, Andy said, "Thank you for sharing Nina Tish's Instagram. Made my day. She's amazing. I love her. So she good. was like my number one like fashion inspiration. She's so beautiful as well. I have like a girl crush on her." Um, okay, so Andy also asked, do you think artificial intelligence and software will get better enough to do high-end retouching in the next couple of years? Ooh, speculation. I love it. <laughs> and kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like with all these Instagram filters you see, like you can change your face. But do you know what? It's crazy. There's like software. I'm going to do a video about it. There's this 3D software where you can like, basically do like a digital photo shoot in 3D and it looks so realistic. There's a few people that have been using it and, and then the models that they can create literally look like those like beautiful glowy robot robots. It's like the freakiest thing ever. I can't remember the software's name, but I was going to do a video about it, about like putting a shoot together because you can basically have like those 3D lights that like imitate what a real flash situation would look like. And then basically wow. make like a real life photo shoot, but it's, but it's it's not real it's just like Im Im it's, it's this is perfect for this current time that is perfect because you don't need to go near a model <laughs> that's, yeah that's why i wanted to do it but i'm just i'm just like there's so many things i want to do and i'm just like yeah i'll do it next week and it's just going to be like quarantine like next year sometime i'll be like yeah great <laughs> um, okay, so bella is asking how do you travel with all your equipment when you fly do you carry it with you through um, tsa and take them all out or hold your breath and check them in how does uh, how does that go um, so you're not, I don't know with different airlines, but I do have a really big bag over there. It's like, it's really big. Um, but I don't think you're meant to travel with lithium batteries in the hold because they can, um, Explode, yeah. they can like, yeah. So I normally put them in my, my um, like travel bag with me mm -hmm. and then the rest kind of goes under. But I know what you mean. I know, and also I normally take my camera bag with my laptop and like hard drives with me on the plane, like the travel you know, in the, in the, in the trouble, what's the word? Like on the plane. <laughs> um, in the, like, with, with me. like hand luggage, that's what you mean? Yeah, hand luggage, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's okay, you had a full gin, I had a full glass of wine, we're all like feeling that. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, drinking some wine is a great idea. And then like halfway through, I start slurring and I'm like, oh, this is what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Very quick to get relaxed. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I feel like, um, but then would you be able to do a carry on because it is quite a quite a big like, piece of gear? Um, would you Would you be traveling with um, it? Or would you rather go to places and then just rent equipment there when you're when you are there? Yeah, I've done that like on kind of bigger shoots. Like so, when I went to LA, I hired more or less everything out there. Um, just because I didn't want to risk it because it was such a long flight and it would be easier I've never been before. to carry it with you and it's just like I feel like if you because I, I I come from a perspective of someone who travels basically like I, I I move countries every two months so I know the feeling of having to pack light and I feel like personally I would never go into like I've never owned that's this is one of the reasons why I never owned the studio light because I just know that I would have to travel with it and just mm. the stress itself of like traveling with all my gear as it is like my my backpack is usually 15 kilograms, like I kid you not. And because it's a backpack and because I'm a girl, they let me through because they just think I'm not going to be able to like, you know, lift it up. And I'm like, watch me. Like I will squat a 30 kilogram backpack if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty hard. Saying that, but my, old B1, um, my old B1 backpack was really quite small for three mm. lights. I can't actually see it yeah. right now, but no, it, was really, it was not bad. <laughs> okay, so... We'll, we'll take a few more questions here and then we'll wrap up. So Mr. Lenz is asking, what is your retouching playlist, music that keeps you focused? Do you have any particular like style? Oh, um, anything like old? I love like 80s and like Motown. I, that, I'm just <laughs> old at heart, even though I wasn't even born then. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, and hi Lily is asking, do you like to place your key light uh, in the on the mid of the face in or like 45 uh, degrees Rembrandt? Um, I'm kind of like 
straight down the middle like as mm-hmm. much as possible with the reflector under underneath mm-hmm. yeah that's my, my vibe that's simple okay. um Bella said, I feel like it's a pain just taking out my laptop alone. Oh, it is. And like sometimes they tell me to like take out my equipment and I'm like specify. I have three hard drives, two cameras, two lenses or three lenses, a computer. Like what do you need me to take out? And I also <laughs> I also have my microphones, like my uh, my microphones that I take with me, you know, uh, my wireless microphones. And they always think it's like a bomb diffuser and they're always like, what is this thing? And they always like... <laughs> for like you know the, the, the powder or anything and i'm like oh my god it's <laughs> because it's like you know it has like the antennas and stuff so it kind of looks a bit suspicious but i always get pulled over like whenever i have it in my in my handbag they're always like what is this thing why does it look like a receiver i'm like well, it's a receiver, but not for a bomb it's just 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 like a microphone yeah okay last question uh the reason i asked was retouching is what sets me apart from other photographers in my area um what would you ask oh the the artificial intelligence uh, question okay um yeah like i mean you know it's i personally like I, I i spoke about it as well before i feel like there's so many people like i personally i'm the kind of person who outsources 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 most of my retouching just because I find that there is better uses of my time I find like I don't mind giving the power away to somebody else because I work with retouchers that I you know know and I admire their work so I know they're going to produce certain consistent results Um, but it's obviously down to everyone and I think it is pretty important to have your own set of skills that in case the retoucher fails for whatever reason or or they can't deliver or something goes wrong you can Mm -hmm. always pick it up and be like okay I'll do it myself and I feel like it's great from your perspective because you are in this position that if something goes wrong and somebody can't deliver the photos for whatever reason you can like you know just stay up all night and just like pick it up for them while for me if this kind of situation happened i would probably be a tiny bit screwed like i'm not super screwed because i still know how to do certain things but i just find like retouchers are a bit more efficient and they just do it a bit better so that's that's where we're kind of coming from um okay what is your favorite moment in your okay let's let's finish on this one uh, duncan asked what is your favorite moment in photography career so far um i would say like when i see my work kind of printed out big it never gets old. So mm-hmm. when, like in Primark, when it's on Oxford Street, that's pretty cool to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, but also recently, so I did a shoot for Patrick Char, um, because my ex, and they that was going to be in Sephora. Well, I think it still is, but obviously not now at the minute. Yeah. <laughs> so that shoot's going to. I really wanted to go see that, but obviously not no time soon. Yeah, <laughs> if you ever go to like Oxford Street or whatever your work is and be like this is me <laughs> oh my god so my, my grandma every year. Like, and like know that it's you but nobody else does and it's i think that's the one thing about like shooting photography or like doing photography in general that it's like it's it's like you can see your work everywhere but nobody knows that it's your work and it's yeah. just like this like you're like a celebrity within yourself you're like oh yeah i'm feeling myself oh my god. Like, knows when my, so I, I did it like I've, I've done quite a lot of shoots for Cosmopolitan UK as well and my gran, when my grandma goes to do a food shop um, she'd like <laughs> tell everyone in the shop <laughs> I'm in Cosmopolitan yeah they're like oh this like, is make sure my grandmother I know her. that's what my parents always do I'm always like post stuff on Facebook and she's like this is my beautiful princess on my mom's stuff <laughs> you are a beautiful princess <laughs> okay. anyway okay we're going to wrap it up Thank you so much, Sarah, for joining us. It was incredible. Thank you for ha- for having you here. Thank you for sharing our knowledge about beauty and everything. Um, I really appreciate you taking your time. I think people have loved it based on the amount of comments that we had today. Thank you so much, everyone. Very fun. Point. Um, I hope everybody has a lovely afternoon, morning, whatever you, wherever you are in the world. You are all over the world, so it's amazing. Thank you so much, everyone. Enjoy your evening, and I will see you later. It's been great. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye.